Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about points of attraction. Points of attractions because you know this is something that you know we're going to have to consider because the attraction to another person is what? Is what's drawing you into them, right? You know we're seeing people and the points of attractions can be something physical, you know, and then, you know, I want to talk about some of the psychological things as well, because moving forward, we want to shift the toxic points of attractions, right? So that now we'll be attracted to a different kind of person, because some of you have been in situations where it's just been toxic relationship after toxic relationship after toxic relationship because your points of attractions, the toxic ones have stayed or remained the same. And if they are staying and remaining the same, you're just switching out people with different faces and names, but you're going to get the same end result because your points of attractions are not in alignment with with what will be conducive, you know, to getting that healthy relationship or getting the kind of love, you know, that you, you're you saying that you want, you know, because if you want those things, you're going to have to go about it differently. If you have not been getting those results, you're going to have to sit down and look at your points of attractions to see, you know what, is there something that is turning me on that's toxic? Or is it something that I'm allowing myself to still be attracted to that just is not serving my good? It's not helping me get what I want right now and what I need and what I deserve. And if that's the case, you know, what are those things? And why am I attracted to them? And how can I now reverse that as well? All right, so that's what... I wanna uh, want you guys to be considering, all right? Because you can learn all about narcissistic abuse, but if you know we want to make a full circle with things, so you're gonna learn about the narcissist. You're gonna go back out there and start dating again, or start befriending people. Our people will come to you and you're not going to sift through them differently, you know, because you're not considering also your point of attractions as well. Okay. Now this is, you know, in a romantic type of settings, you know, these are, what are your deal breakers with people or do you even have them? You know, a lot of times survivors have been so loose with their boundaries in this area um, that they're just bending. Well, I said I didn't want to date anyone um, that was going through a divorce, but you know, oh, they're, they filed their paperwork. So, you know, maybe I'll just allow myself to emotionally attach right now, even though they're not free and clear yet. Or I said, you know, I wasn't going to date anyone that wasn't financially secure, but you know, this person is trying, they're trying. So maybe I'll just, I'll bend on that and then it ends up becoming an issue because they weren't really trying the way that you thought, you know, and you were going off of their, um, Oh, goodness, what is the word for it? <laughs> um, you weren't going basing things off of where they were, but you know where they could be, you know, and that is very risky. And I don't advise survivors to do that. You know, you guys have been through so much trauma that you need someone that's pretty much ready made. You know, I'm not saying that a perfect human being because they're not out there, but a pretty much a, a ready made. <clears throat> and the word that I couldn't find was potential. <laughs> you were going off of potential, you know, which can be a very risky thing. And then, you know, some of us really have to think about within our points of attractions, you know, are we so led by our flesh that sometimes we will let it override our common sense and our logic and knowing this person is toxic for us in so many ways, but yet we we're not resisting them because our point of attraction is led so hardly through our flesh that it's controlling us, you know?
Like, oh, I love a tall and dark, handsome man. And yes, he has five baby mamas and he has a whole history of failed relationships. But, you know, I want to give him a chance. He's so handsome and charming. And, you know, he says, you know, he's ready for the real one now. And But he has like this proven history of not, you know. And then we think and hope, you know, that we'll be different. And I made videos on on that, on thinking that will be the exception. And oftentimes that is just simply not the case. It doesn't mean that people cannot make a shift and a change, but you know, I don't recommend survival survivors take on risky people like that because you guys have been through the most, you know, you have been through the most and yes, everyone has a life and has had this and that and has been around the block, but you know, that's way different than someone who has a perpetual pattern of making families all here and there and everywhere. And now they're here in front of your face. Okay. But you know, this is all about our points of attractions. So yes. Okay. He was tall, dark, and handsome. That fulfills my eyes and my physical points of attraction, but well, goodness, his track record right there overrides all of that because I really need someone that can finish what they start, that can be reliable to me, you know, that has to override that flesh and, and that particular situation because then we're setting ourselves up to be the number six. You know, because we know how those narcissists come in, they want to get you pregnant, they want to lock you down and, you know, and then it's going to be on to the next when they get old and tired or bored with you. And now you're going to feel like, you know, you're sucked in and you have this child and you want to try to make it work and ugh, you don't want those issues. You don't want those issues. So, you know, thinking, thinking about your points of attractions. And for my male listeners out there, I've said this in other videos for you guys, Yeah, you know, just going on that external, oh, she looks like my dream girl, but you got to make sure the inside matches. What are your points of, uh, of, of attractions? What are the real virtues that you're looking for? Let's say that you're wanting a wife. Okay. Are you just, oh, I just need that arm candy, but then you get this plastic person. And, you know, she's not going to fulfill you emotionally. She's not going to have that nurturing to you. She's not going to appreciate you because, you know, you're not really making sure you're looking at those inner virtues. And that goes for everybody. So, you know, your points of attractions. And then some people have this rescue thing, you know, where they will meet the most broken person and start a relationship with this person and all their emotional baggage and all the things that they need to be correcting and getting themselves together before they even present themselves to another person. But yet you meet them and it's like, you're going to dust them off and you know what? Yeah, this person is going through this and that, but they just need a loyal person in their life. And, you know, I'm willing to do the work with them. And once we get over this mountain and that mountain and this mountain and that mountain, we're going to have a happily ever after. They're going to see how loyal I am and we're going to ride off into the sunset. No, what usually happens in those cases is that person has had many good people probably come into their life and try to help them. And they've burnt every bridge because they are emotionally immature and just overall immature and ignorant. And they're not willing to put in the work. They're looking to be rescued. They want you to do the work. But when you're doing the work, they're not doing the work. So you're vibrating high and they're vibrating low. And then they're just basically being an energy um, vampire and a material vampire sucking from you, right? They're sucking from you at that point, but they're not putting anything back in there. So now you're drained and tired and exhausted. And it's just a horrible setup because the relationship, you're going to have to keep it that way. You got to keep giving them your energy to sustain them to where you want them to be 
and they're not even there. You're the one that's there. <clears throat> and they're sucking off of you. And how long is that going to last before you hit the ground? Okay, because you're doing too much. You know, when someone has all that going on in their life, they are supposed to get themselves together and have some type of respect and dignity about themselves before they then go and present themselves to another person. You don't bring all of that to another person. No, you get yourself together. You do your work so that you can be the best you and attract someone that's equally yoked to that. But with the points of attraction, sometimes the survivor, they want to rescue because they've been programmed to be the sacrificial lamb. They are used to being in lopsided relationships. They are used to giving more than they get. You know, um, they're just used to doing that. So it's a toxic pattern that's continuing that's going to end up getting the same result. Because you're not realizing that point of attraction in you of wanting to be somebody's fixer. Instead, it should you have to reverse that and it has to become a turn off. Like, wait a minute, you have your your finances are horrible, you, you, your work situation is not right, you, you're battling this addiction, you don't taking care of your children, you know, you still tying up your loose, you know, all these things are going on. Okay. You're in and out of court issues, you know, in and out of jail. <clears throat> that should turn you off. Like, wait a minute, what are you doing? What are you doing presenting yourself to anybody right now? Where are your priorities? Where are your priorities? Obviously, they're out of order. Obviously, they're out of order. You're worried about sex and all this other stuff, and you have all this stuff going on in your life that you need to be cleaning up and focusing on. Where are your priorities? It should be a turnoff. Like, wait a minute, what are you even doing trying to start a relationship with anybody? Get yourself together. Okay? I don't care how tall, dark, and handsome you are. I don't care how beautiful you are in those hills and your silhouette. You know? This is what I'm talking about with the points of attraction. The points of attractions. And then, you know, some of us, we really have some toxic ways about us. We like that hot and cold. We, we like to chase people. You know? We like to chase them. There is a difference between pursuing someone and chasing them. You shouldn't have to be chasing love. That's not healthy. Those are games that adults should not be playing. Nobody should be chasing love. And if you feel like you've been chasing love, chances are you've just been chasing a toxic relationship. It's not even love that you're chasing because love surrenders. Okay, love surrenders, guys. So you guys have to really think about what were your points of attractions and what toxic things within you um, that you're doing when you are embarking on or considering to bring someone into your life that may be toxic for you. You know, and you find yourself in these patterns of doing it again and again and again. So it could be, you know what, I always jump into sex really fast and then I'm emotionally attached and then I don't know how to walk away when I figure out they're not bad for me. I mean that they are bad for me in every way, and but I enjoy them physically, you know? So your point of attraction was the physical, you know, was the sex. And you're leading with that. When, you know, yes, sex is a part of a healthy relationship, but you need trust, you need communication. I would think you would want to have love there. You know, you need those building blocks and the foundation. 
or else it just cheapens the whole experience and then you get a cheap result instead of something that is everlasting and fulfilling, guys. So maybe it would be for you, hey, you know, moving forward, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take more time before I get physically, uh, you know, intimate with someone. I, I'm, I'm going to go in their head first. I want to get to know their mind, their heart, you know, their spirit. Find about their passions, their likes and dislikes. I want to see, you know, I want to see different sides of this person. I want to uh, experience some things with them first. See how they are. You know, find out what they value. Find out if, if we're equally yoked mentally and spiritually. So, you know, just going about things the right way and knowing what our points of attractions are, okay? All right, guys. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go on and on in this situation, you know. But, you know, we got to see. We got to see what those points of attractions are. And if they are leading us astray. And if something definitely needs to change. Because, yes, you have to do something different to get a different result. If you do the same thing, you get the same result, people. So, yeah, you're going to have to do something different. And that's going to take you to do something different. So that you can get a different kind of person. Okay, guys? So I hope that this video, you know, has given someone something to think about and their points of attractions with other people that they're bringing into their life and seeing where they're falling into toxic patterns. And they're ending up attracting the same kinds of people over and over and over. If you want to stop, you know, only attracting takers, then stop being in lopsided relationships, you know? And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, everything isn't a tit for tat. Everything isn't a tit for tat, but they have to be available to you and you have to feel like, you know, they are putting into you as they are putting in, as you are putting into them. Okay? Okay. Because a lot of guys out there, they're like, you know, I like to spoil my girl. You know, maybe she doesn't make as much money as me. But, you know, is she emotionally available? Is she nurturing to you? Is she supportive to you? Is she make, adds to your happiness in life? You know, that's what I mean by it doesn't have to be a tit for a tat. Oh, I bought her a diamond ring. She doesn't have to run out and buy you a diamond ring. I'm not saying stuff like that. I'm saying like you feel like she's putting into you as well. Yes, I bought her a diamond ring, look here, but she's so sweet to me. She's there for me. She's my soft place to fall. I feel like she's my best friend or, you know, I just really love her company. And, you know, like it, it's a, she's adding value to your, your life in other ways. And you like to spoil her. That's fine. That's fine. You know, but it's just about being reciprocated at that point reciprocated and appreciated. If you feel that, if you feel reciprocated and appreciated, then your generosity is well. You know, that's a sign that your generosity is going in the right direction. You know, it's when you feel resentful. All she does is take from me. You know, she's never there when I need her or available to me. She complains when I give. She never says thank you. She's just entitled to these things. Okay, red flag. Red flag then. And it's not the point that she doesn't make the same money as you. It's the point of her attitude and her spirit. Okay. Some people, you know, are just so used to being treated bad. They don't know how to be treated good. They don't even know how to receive that. And it, it could be so toxic that it might even turn you off when you do actually meet someone that tries to treat you good. Because you're so used to be treating bad. But that's something toxic within you at that point that you will have to look into. All right, guys. So, you know, if this video resonates with you, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe to my channel. 
you know, hopefully you made it to the end of the video. You know, I always tell people to always listen until the very end because <laughs> I might think I'm done and something else will come through. All right. All the good stuff is just not in the beginning of my video. You got to listen to all my audios all the way through. Even when I say, if this resonates with you, once I start talking like that, you might be like, oh, the video is over. No. And you see there's five more minutes left. Nope. I said some more pearls in there. So keep always listen to my audios all the way through. You might miss something important at the very end because I'm a vessel too. And when I make these audios, I'm opening to, you know, let messages flow through me. So something comes in through the end sometimes. And I don't want you to miss that. All right. But again, yes, please go ahead and like if it resonates and subscribe, of course, hit the bell so that you're notified when I upload videos, which is quite frequently, guys, quite frequently. I have over 300 videos here to help you on your healing process from narcissistic abuse or from a toxic relationship to help you increase your emotional maturity, to help you with your shadow work, right? To give you a lot of relational pearls, okay? And to learn more about psychology, you know, because life is about relationships, including the one, and most importantly, the one that we have with ourselves. Okay. Um, I have the motivational playlist for survivors of narcissistic abuse for the days that you are feeling triggered, down and out, don't want to get out of bed, you know, angry. I have a playlist called anger after narcissistic abuse, you know, check these things out. A lot of things right at your fingertips to help you. But if you're going through all these 300 videos and you feel like, you know what, I just need a little more. I need more than this. Okay. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching where I can just talk to you about your specific situation and experiences and help you through those. Okay. And I do this through voice calls. I do um, FaceTime and I do Skypes and I even do email coaching because writing is therapeutic. You can schedule at www.lakiacrawford.com or you can email coachlakia at gmail.com. Some people message me on uh, Facebook Messenger, Instagram. People find ways to get a hold of me. There's a lot of contact information. All of them are fine. But if you want the smooth selling, quick, fast, easy, go to the website, select your time. And, you know, pay for your session and you're booked and I will see you at your session. I always recommend that you write down your questions ahead of time, you know, because sometimes the time flies. It's an hour session and, um, you know, I don't want you to forget any important things. All right. I have books, guys, that you can order through my website, LakiaCrawford.com. You could get a signed copy of that or you can go to Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, Create Space. And you can get the ebook or um, non signed copies through those uh, avenues. Okay. I have no narc zone merchandise, guys. Um, cute t shirts and hats, uh, mouse pads, bumper stickers, coffee mugs. Just go to my website and click products, and you can see the line. I'll be adding more and more things to it. Um, I have nice, cute little warm scully hats for the winter. So you might want to get that. Um, with that being said, guys, I do have the support group on Facebook. I see a lot of you coming over and that makes me really happy. Um, it's definitely a, a wonderful community where we uplift each other. We share information. We make sure we're laughing and smiling. Like, you know, come on over and give yourself that added support. You definitely won't regret that. And the name of the support group is Lakia Reflection and Progression Crawford. That link is below all of the videos. As a matter of fact, all you got to do is touch it. All right. And with that being said, guys, just keep doing the work, you know, and before you go back out there after this narcissistic relationship, you really want to take inventory on yourself and make sure that you are correcting any and all that you can so that you can make better decisions moving forward. You can see the signs faster and you will begin to attract a different kind of person and get rid of, you know, attracting that same old, same old because we're tired of that. We're exhausted from that. We've been through that enough and it's time to grow past that. All right. All right, guys. So it was great talking to you and until next time, please take care.